nasty, nasty jazz. Hot diggity dog. The Whispers are one of the creepiest villains we've seen in the entire Walking Dead series, and one of my personal favorites. So it is so sad to me that so many people quit watching before they were even introduced. So this video is for people who don't really have time to watch the show anymore but still want to be caught up. One thing I want to mention quick is that we're only going to be talking about the TV version and not the comic version. And I'm not going to be including anything from Tales of the Walking Dead because, let's be real, nobody knows if that's actually canon and it retcons the whispers which I am not a fan of. So let's get into the creepy tale of the whispers. Our story begins six years after the presumed death of Rick Grimes. Carol's adopted son, Henry, has grown up and wants to learn blacksmithing at the Hilltop Colony. Carol is apprehensive at first, as the communities have been distant over the last few years, but comes around as she knows he will be safe there. Meanwhile, Eugene and Rosita are on a mission to install a longer range radio onto a nearby tower. As he begins his climb down, Eugene spots a herd of walkers approaching the area. Having no other choice, Eugene jumps off the ladder, spraining his ankle. While Eugene and Rosita are on the run from the horde, Eugene begins to fall behind. It's clear the two of them won't be able to run forever, so they're gonna have to find somewhere to hide. The two begin to mask their smell with mud and dirt as the herd travels past them, hoping not to be spotted but not before they begin to hear something strange. Where are they? Rosita's later found alone and unconscious in the woods, with no Eugene in sight. This is where she shares her revelation with the group. From here, Daryl, Aaron, and Jesus set off to rescue Eugene. While searching for their lost companion, the rescue team come across something strange. Jesus states, They're just milling around. That's not... Normal. They all acknowledge something doesn't feel right with the walkers, but proceed with their mission anyway. But not before something hears them. Later that night, the rescue team comes across an old barn where they discover Eugene hiding out. He begins to corroborate Rosita's story of the walkers speaking, and suggests they could even be evolving. Look like, I look like an idiot. Daryl decides to split from the group to lure the herd away. While doing so, the herd almost completely ignores the noise. Now at this point, Michonne has discovered her friends are out in the wild and hurries after them. As Jesus and Aaron carry a wounded Eugene, a thick fog sets in, making the already hard to see enemy even more concealed. The group is cornered and the only way out is to fight. While Jesus and Aaron fend off the herd, Michonne along with Magna and Yumiko find their location and begin to dig out the dirt blocking the gate. As the gate finally opens, everyone begins retreating. Mere steps behind the rest, Jesus swings to take out the last walkers, when... With Daryl now catching up, the group quickly takes out the new threat. While investigating the body, Daryl notices a stitch in the back of the head. He cuts it off, revealing a human underneath. Jesus. Aaron begins to grieve his fallen friend, but this is no place to mourn. Once escaped from the graveyard, the remaining members discuss what just happened and what they saw. From now on, even a single walker can be a threat. The group dabbled with the guts trick in the past, but this is taking it to a whole new level. While taking Jesus' body back to the hilltop, the group stumbles across another small herd. This time, with the knowledge of the whisperers in mind, Daryl shoots the walker in the leg, revealing the Whisperer within. Gotcha, bitch. This shows the biggest flaw with the Whisperers. With the element of surprise taken away, they really stand no chance against any relatively skilled fighter. While the group takes out most of the Whisperers, one surrenders. This is Lydia, and she will soon turn out to be very important. So they bring her as a prisoner. Now the group makes it back to the hilltop with Jesus' body in hand and prepares a funeral while Daryl brings Lydia down to the dungeons for questioning. The night before, Henry got caught drinking outside the walls and was also thrown into the dungeon for the night. Here he begs Daryl to stop because he thinks it's too much for Lydia. Daryl obliges, but only because he's got another plan. 
to let the two get to know each other and learn everything he needs to know while sitting outside the window. Around the same time Luke and Alden are out searching for Yumiko, they begin to follow a trail of arrows stuck to trees when they see something strange. A walker eerily freezes in place. While processing what they are looking at, it's already too late, as they have been cornered. Trail ends here. Daryl and Henry begin to see that Lydia is really just a scared girl. Lydia tells them the story of an abusive father from the early days of the apocalypse, but when Daryl pries a little further, the truth comes out that her mother was the abuser the whole time. This is where Lydia begins to let her guard down. It isn't long until Tara is screaming for Daryl's help on top of the hilltop wall. Daryl rushes over to see what's wrong, and before him lays an army, and leading that army we finally meet Alpha, and she only wants one thing. My daughter! Alpha reveals that she is Luke and Alden prisoner and proposes a trade. The leaders within Hilltop begin to discuss what to do. Many of them want to give Lydia up, but Henry objects, as he knows the truth of her being abused. Henry and Lydia's relationship from the get-go is a lot more wholesome than Carl and Lydia's in the comics. Uh, a lot less eye socket licking. It comes across like they're a little bit more childlike, which I think actually fits well with this version of the story. Daryl's conflicted about the matter as he was abused himself by his father, but realizes what's at stake. He begins to lead Lydia down to meet her mom once again, and when face to face, Everyone can only stand and look in horror as Lydia walks off with the monster she's been speaking about. Henry begins to lash out as he believes they just sent her back to somebody who is going to hurt her, and later on, when nobody is looking, sneaks away to run after her. I think now would be a good time to talk about the character of Alpha. As we've seen, she is no stranger to hitting her daughter, emotionally abusing her, and in some cases even threatening her life. Everything down to the way she moves is uncomfortable. But one of the most interesting things about Alpha, in my opinion, is the subtle way she shows that she's really just pretending. She's putting on this cult leader mask and pretending not to have any humanity left because that's what she thinks makes a person strong. But even the way she subtly nods at Lydia when she sees her shows that she's just as vulnerable to emotions as anybody else. It isn't long until Henry is spotted and captured by a titan whisperer. This guy will be coming back to later. Alpha begins to play with her food as she ties Henry up and psychologically messes with Lydia. Meanwhile, back at the hilltop, Daryl and Connie set out after Henry shortly after discovering he's run off. While in the Whisperer camp, we see the inner workings of how they function. This place is magnificent! We see the hunter-gatherers, the skin suit makers, the herd steerers, and other Whisperers with their own task contributing to the group. Within Alpha's ranks, however, we find two defectors challenging her power. We get to see just how cruel Alpha can be as she decapitates the woman and hands her head to her husband, before shortly ending him as well. This understandably has Henry shitting his pants. I think at this point he actually realizes what he's gotten himself into. Later that night, Alpha brings Lydia deep into the woods where she finds Henry, still tied up. Alpha commands Lydia to kill him to prove she hasn't gone soft. While Lydia is in hysterics, she listens to her mother and picks up the knife, getting ready to kill Henry, when suddenly, the camp is overrun by a stray herd. This was no accident, however, as Daryl and Connie led them here using their own trick. As Alpha is distracted, Daryl and Connie move in to retrieve Henry, but Henry won't let Lydia go. He begs her to come with, and in the heat of the moment, she runs with them. I was 
not going to send an army because she doesn't have to. Just send Beta. The next morning, we find Daryl, Connie, Henry, and Lydia still running, as they know the Whisperers are still on their tail. Connie suggests they take shelter in an old apartment building, where they can create a choke point so the Whisperers will have to separate from the herd. You see, Alpha's the type of leader to send the people underneath her to do her dirty work. So this is where our main man Beta comes in. Beta is an absolute unit of a Whisperer. There's a reason he's Alpha's right hand man. Daryl sees the herd begin to pour into the streets, but here he isn't trying to hide. He starts taking out the Whisperers from above, alerting Beta. Here we see Beta pushing into the apartment building, falling right into Daryl's trap. Leave them no way out. So who is this absolute monster of a man? Well at this point in the story, his identity is meant to be a secret. But what we find out from flashback episodes is that Alpha, along with Lydia as a child, found Beta alone in an insane asylum. This is about two years into the outbreak, so he's already pretty far gone. But he soon realizes that Alpha may be just as insane as he is. He struggles to put down his old friend who has turned, but with Alpha's guidance, finds the strength to do so, but then he gets a little weird with it and cuts his head off and wears it as a helmet. And from here, he was purely loyal to Alpha. Daryl prepares behind a door, and in true beta fashion, he comes crashing through the door, using another door as a shield. From here, the other whispers spread out throughout the room. Daryl picking them off one by one, until it's time for her 1v1 with the big guy. Daryl does well at first to fend off Beta's strikes, but eventually, size overtakes him, and it degrades to Beta basically just throwing Daryl around the room. That is, until Daryl gets the upper hand, stabbing Beta and crashing through the wall. While Beta's a little bit behind him, he starts to follow suit. He creeps slowly towards the room he believes Daryl is hiding in, taunting and threatening him. Little does he know, Daryl is actually behind him. And before he knows it, he's taken a trip down the elevator shaft. Daryl takes this as a win and even taunts him by spitting down the elevator shaft. From here, our main group set back towards the hilltop, thinking the threat is dealt with, but little did they know. Beta is not your regular whisperer. I stand before you today at the start of a new tomorrow. A tomorrow made possible by the sacrifices of many over the years. All season, the Kingdom, another allied community, has been preparing a fair for the Coalition of Settlements as a way to bring everyone together after years of distance. The fair is intended to be open to anyone within the coalition. Here people will trade, participate in games, and converse with each other after not doing so for so long. This is exactly what Carl Grimes envisioned in his final days. At least, that's how it was supposed to be. As everyone floods in to enjoy the fair, we see Alpha disguise herself and sneak in. Side note, the wig she is wearing is actually a scalp. Yeah, enjoy that thought. Since the communities have been so distant over the past six years, it's an ease for Alpha to sneak in under the guise of a civilian from a neighboring community. The fair kicks off as Henry, Lydia, and Daryl arrive. Everyone believes this is the safest place for Lydia, being surrounded by all these people. Even outside the community, a new group known as the Highwaymen defend the roads for travelers. It should have been safe. Henry and Lydia spend this time getting to know each other before Henry is called to fix a pipe, leaving Lydia alone for Alpha to find her. The fight with Beta was a declaration of conflict in Alpha's eyes. At least, that's what she told the Whisperers. In reality, she wanted her daughter back at any cost, and revenge on the people that wronged her. After finding the bodies of the scalped hilltop residents, Carol, Daryl, Michonne, and Yumiko set out to search for other people who may have become victims of the Whispers. Night falls as the group searches. Here we see the Whispers quickly surround them, followed by Beta menacingly emerging from the darkness. 
Alpha then follows suit with a bloody machete in hand. As the group remains surrounded, Alpha commands Daryl to walk at gunpoint. Here she leads him up a cliff, revealing the nuclear bomb of a walker horde. We flash back to see the confrontation between Lydia and her mother, revealing Lydia resisted going back and stayed at the kingdom, royally pissing Alpha off. As Daryl is brought back to the group, Alpha lets them off with what seems like a warning and a threat, mentioning she marked a border to separate their lands. Thinking they got off easy, the group walks off. As morning falls, they discover Sadiq tied up and gagged. Clearly traumatized, he can't even speak. He can only point. And what we see him pointing at is a declaration of war disguised as merely a threat and a warning. Ozzy. Alec. DJ. Frankie. Tammy. Adeline. Rodney. Tara. And Enid. All decapitated and marked on the border. There aren't words to describe the horror the group is seeing, but one remains. Sadiq was left alive to tell the terrifying story of what happened, but instead tells a story of unity between the victims, who fought until the end which in a really messed up way is what the fair was all about. We end on Lydia and Daryl paying their respects to Henry at the border as the snow begins to fall. It's been many months since the horrors of the fair occurred. In that time, the communities have been walking on eggshells. The whispers migrated south for the winter, leading to a relatively quiet few months. But the paranoia of crossing Alpha's border still raged. During the winter months, we see the kingdom fall, as Henry isn't there to repair it like before. The refugees set off towards the kingdom, but during a snowstorm, the caravan is forced to cross the border. Although no immediate consequences come of this, it definitely does not go unnoticed. During the storm, Negan rescues a lost Judith, which Michonne is thankful for. This earns him some brownie points within the communities. We pick up in the spring to the community's training as one at Oceanside. The fair brought them together, in terms of realizing they're stronger as one. But the walker nuke Alpha is hoarding is keeping the coalition from hunting the whisperers down. While playing in the sand, Judith uncovers what looks like a fresh whisperer mask, setting paranoia off once again. The leaders of the communities deliberate over what to do about the revelation when they are interrupted by a fallen satellite. This starts a fire in Alexandria's hunting grounds, which bleeds into the Whisperer border. Unfortunately, the crash itself is on the opposite side of the border. The group crosses it and puts out the fire. Sadly for them, this violation is seen. Shortly after, Aaron also briefly crosses the border, sealing the group's third strike. Well, that was stupid! Now, Carol has been on the ocean for months, following Henry's death. She's broke things off with Ezekiel and ran. We see her return at possibly the worst time. The rumblings of the whispers returning sets her off on a scouting mission, where she soon, once again, comes face to face with Alpha.
After crossing Alpha's border for the third time, the Whispers begin sending waves upon waves of walkers to Alexandria's doorstep. Day in and day out, the survivors battle the hordes, weakening and tiring them. Over at the hilltop, a tree has fallen and struck an essential building with residents inside, injuring nine. Some residents begin to call out for conflict as the attacks are clearly coming from their old creepy friends. Once Alpha is satisfied with her games, she sends Gamma, her new apprentice, to demand a meeting with the leaders of the Coalition. The North Border. Now. Daryl, Carol, Michonne, and other fighters meet at the border in the dead of night. Here, Alpha slithers her way out of the darkness, scolding the group for crossing her border three times. She demands punishment, but subverts the group by stating, There will be no bloodshed this time. Instead, she begins tormenting Carol about Henry's death. Blonde boy, he screamed your name just before we took his head. You're a fucking idiot! This needs to stop! Now! Carol, still grieving her loss, fires a shot on Alpha, but is deflected by Michonne. Alpha tells Carol, I forgive you, mother to mother. It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Alpha has not forgotten the punishment that needs to be dealt, and says she'll be claiming more land for her border, cutting off the Coalition's hunting grounds. This is a clear act of war in the eyes of many, and accordingly, resistance to the whispers begins to brew inside Alexandria's walls. The highwaymen lost two of their own to the whispers and have not taken too kindly to Lydia staying in Alexandria. In the dead of night, they corner her and begin to beat on her. They begin to take it too far, but not before Negan comes to the rescue, accidentally killing one of the highwaymen in the process. This makes our old pal Negan public enemy number one once again. While a debate rages on whether to hang Negan for his crimes or not, Gabriel goes to check in on him, and in horror he realizes Negan is gone. Now, back in Alexandria, Sadiq has been going through intense PTSD after his time at the massacre. Coaching him through his trauma is Dante a new doctor to Alexandria recruited during the time jump. He's a little weird, but has a way of calming Sadiq down during his episodes. Now, Carol has been extremely on edge since returning, and to cope, has been taking pills to stay awake. This leads to some extremely reckless decisions, endangering herself and others around her. She drags Daryl out under the impression he's helping her look for the Horde, but in reality, she's there to take a Whisperer hostage for questioning. While being interrogated, the Whisperer remains solid and doesn't break. Gabriel debates what to do with him when suddenly, something is very wrong. Put your healing hands on me, Doc. I'm burning up here. The Whisperer dies right there, right in the cell. When investigating his death, Dante accuses Sadiq of giving him the wrong type of medication. This capture mission wasn't in vain, however, as the now-dead Whisperer revealed Alpha told everyone she murdered Lydia during the events of the fair. Carol then takes Lydia to the border, where she reveals to Gamma Lydia is alive, Surprise, sending her into hysterics. You see, Gamma was always a follower. Her and her sister easily fell into the ways of the Whisperers and bought into Alpha's bullshit instantly. One day while migrating back north, Gamma's sister goes into a frenzy and attempts to attract the Horde to Alpha, taking them both down. Here we see Gamma kill her own sister in the name of Alpha. This is why the news breaks her so badly and makes her question her loyalty. Lydia realizes what is happening and accuses Carol of using her like her mother would and runs away across the border. In Alexandria, a mysterious flu begins to wipe across the community. Sadiq, still going through intense PTSD and guilt, is overworked and overtired. While trying to figure out what's causing the flu, Dante comes in to comfort him. While talking, Dante makes a clicking sound with his mouth. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. 
triggering the memory of the barn. Here he realizes Dante was the one who held his eyes open and made him watch all his friends die. Sadiq can't hide the fear in his eyes, and as Dante realizes his mistake, he lunged on Sadiq, strangling him to death in the dead of night. He's later put down by Rosita, protecting her baby from his reanimated corpse. Dante is quickly caught and imprisoned. Here, everything spills out. The Whispers were in fact responsible for the walker attacks, tree at the hilltop, and poisoning of the water supply. Dante was a spy for Alpha, sent in under the disguise of a regular survivor. Here, he made himself essential with his medical skills. However, these skills wouldn't be enough to save him from the wrath of Gabriel, as he strikes him down in a blind rage. This sends Daryl along with Carol and a small group of survivors on a desperate mission to locate and destroy Alpha's horde. They partially get their wish as Carol recklessly chased after Alpha, leading the group directly into a cave surrounded by the horde. The group navigates through the narrow passages in order to find a way out. As they come across an exit, Carol finds sticks of dynamite and intends to destroy the horde right then and there. The group rejects Carol's plan as the mission has already been botched. Carol ignores the group's pleas and lights off the dynamite, trapping both Magda and Connie inside. Carol is devastated, but not as much as Daryl, who blames her for their presumed deaths. This was the final straw for the Coalition, officially beginning the Whisperer War. After escaping his cell, Negan's newfound freedom brings him across the Whisperer's border. Yelling in the woods, he intends to attract the Whisperers to him. He gets his wish as Beta finds him and takes him prisoner. Negan doesn't catch the memo and begins talking Beta's ear off, explaining his intentions. I want to join, alright? I am a joiner, get me a damn application already. Beta threatens him in a silence before entering the camp. Here we see Beta display his uneasiness to Alpha over Negan's presence. She hears him, but tasks him to test Negan's strength and loyalty. Negan observes in the distance as Beta bends the knee to Alpha. Over the day, Beta assigns Negan menial tasks to test him in the Whisperer lifestyle. Here he skins a walker, cooks and kills dinner, and performs other labor-intense tasks. All while he keeps the leather jacket on. After the hog is killed, Negan lines up for dinner, but is denied by Beta as a way to show Negan the hierarchy within the Whisperers. Knowing Alpha is watching, Negan takes Beta's bullshit. Another Whisperer is seen giving Negan some food in secret, showing there may be some dissent within the group. While steering a horde with Beta, Negan continues to annoy him. Beta decides he's had enough and kills the Whisperer who gave Negan a share of food drawing attention to the skinless Negan. Negan is presumed dead and Beta returns to deliver the news. Elf is disappointed, but is quickly interrupted. Ready for my goddamn skin suit. You best bring that extra long tape measure on account of my humongous balls. <laughs> Negan publicly and boldly announces his loyalty to Alpha. Over the following days, Negan follows Alpha closely and observes his surroundings, noticing the shady nature of Gamma. Negan is quick to see this because during the Savior arc, he had seen his own followers act the same way right before turning on him. He brings the revelation to Alpha, looking to prove his loyalty, and Alpha hears him out, investigating Gamma, of course, not before threatening him. She quickly realized Gamma is missing and never made it to her post. Here she begins to believe Negan's words sending Beta on a retrieval mission for her defector. Later, Alpha drags Negan into the woods. Here he believes he's about to die, when he's instructed to turn around. This is Alpha's idea of a reward for Negan's loyalty. N -n 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 -nasty. Nasty jab. 
Later that day, Alpha traps the group in the cave. With bait on the hunt for Gamma and certain blood spilt, Alpha marches to war. After defecting from the Whisperers, Gamma shows up at the gates of Alexandria and explains their friends are in danger. Gabriel and Rosita naturally don't believe her and take her prisoner, where they force a confession out of her. While the cave group sets off back to Alexandria, Daryl is on full offensive, trying to take out Alpha. He quickly locates her and wastes no time attacking her. The two exchange blows in the river, Daryl taking a cut to the forehead and a knife to the leg. Alpha doesn't leave unscathed, as Daryl stabbed her with a tree branch in the shoulder. The two wander in the woods, collapsing in a workshop. Bleeding out, Alpha realizes she just had to outlast Daryl, and begins calling in walkers. Daryl musters up the strength to fight the walkers, but passes out shortly after. In a confused daze, Alpha sees Lydia approach her, but she's not there for her mother. She rescues Daryl and severs her relationship with her mom permanently. Alpha sees this as transcendence and believes she is stronger than ever. While this is happening, Gamma confesses Beta will be coming for her, putting Alexandria on high alert. Night falls as the troops leave to protect the perimeter. Little do they know, the Whisperers had another plan in mind. They dug tunnels underneath the ground, connecting to Alexandria. With the aid of the now deceased Dante, Beta is able to crawl through the graves of the flu victims and walk their grounds. Within Alexandria's walls, Beta wastes no time taking people out. And what's even more messed up is that he lets them all turn, building himself an army within. By the time Gabriel realizes the deception, Alexandria is in chaos as walkers roam the streets. During the chaos, Beta locates and extracts Gamma by force, but not before Laura comes in to- Oh, nope, oh, she's dead. Gabriel's group is able to ambush Beta, rendering the mission a failure. The group now believes Gamma's story and begins to trust her. Around this time, Michonne becomes absent from the war as she meets a man named Virgil, with the promise of heavy artillery. This of course was a lie, however she finds evidence that Rick Grimes is alive, and is led to believe the war has already ended by Judith. Marking her exit from the war, she leaves to track down her lost husband. Alpha prepares to march to war, Negan attempts to talk her down and spare the lives of the survivors people he's grown to actually care for since his decade-long imprisonment. Alpha concedes to Negan's request and agrees to give them a chance to join her. Night falls as the survivors prepare for battle. Judith restores the lost wing on Daryl's vest, signaling that Daryl is whole once again. The training at Oceanside over the last year prepared the survivors for this exact moment. Growls are heard in the distance as Alpha's mega horde comes into view. It isn't long before their defenses are taken down, and all-out war begins. As the battle rages, we see Alpha and Negan on the outskirts, preparing what looks to be a makeshift catapult out of walker intestines. Negan is confused, as he was led to believe Alpha would spare his old captors. But Alpha responds with the coldest one-liner in the show. I thought you wanted them to join us. They will. As part of my horde. The survivors are pelted with a strange substance during the battle, and it isn't long before its purpose is revealed. Ah! Ah! Daryl commands everyone to retreat back into Hilltop's walls but the Whisperers weren't looking for a war of attrition. The hilltop burns as walkers flood in the gates. Chaos ensues everywhere. Some try to escape, while the others stay and fight. Ezekiel tries to rescue the children as Carol looks over the mayhem she caused. Yumiko stands her ground against the horde as a familiar face begins to peek through the crowd, but with no Connie to follow. The hilltop is lost, and the survivors are scattered. Negan is tasked to round up the scattered walkers in the area, but unfortunately for him, Aaron sees him with a mask on, leading the survivors to believe Negan 
has turned on them once again. This point is enforced further when Negan finds a scared Lydia and captures her to bring to Alpha. Alden, Kelly, and Gamma make it out, but have Beta on their tail. It isn't long before Gamma is captured and gutted by Beta, but before she goes for good, she rips off Beta's mask, exposing the face underneath. The face of the once famous country singer, Half Moon. Beta isn't cool with this and murders anyone who sees what's underneath, including his own people. Daryl and Jerry find Ezekiel in the Hilltop's rubble, where he tells them Earl took the kids to a rendezvous point. But when they arrive, they find Earl dead, with Judith having to put him down. Rest in peace, Earl. You had a... Nutsack made of steel! Negan begins to lead Alpha to the cabin he has Lydia tied up in, but along the way she finds out Alpha's true intention of killing her daughter. She believes this is not only her destiny, but Lydia's as well. She approaches the cabin's door and opens it, only to find it empty before this happens. That's right, Negan takes out the head of the Whispers with one fell swoop. It's then revealed Negan didn't conjure up the scheme alone. Carol released him and sicked him on Alpha, finally getting her revenge for her son's death. This is very bad. Alpha may be gone, but there was always going to be someone bigger and meaner to take her place. Carol puts her head on Henry's pike and leaves Negan to fend for himself. Beta quickly finds her head, but doesn't see an issue, as he believes she is still speaking to him. Daryl finds Negan right where Carol left him, and before he can take him back to Alexandria, they are ambushed by whispers. Being of an animalistic ideology, however, they don't kill them. Instead, Negan is crowned the new Alpha. He plays around with this for a few minutes before finally proving he is definitely on Daryl's side by killing the ambushing whispers. As Beta is off alone, Alpha's words continue to echo through his head. He goes through a strange grieving process where he comes out the other side as something entirely different. Beta has full on lost his mind and begins roaming the land, hunting for the survivors. <laughs> he makes his first stop at Alexandria where the horde and remaining whispers devastate the safe zone, but they do not find them. You see, Lydia was able to escape the cabin and even put her in for her own protection and make it back to the group, in time to warn them that Beta would stop at nothing now that her mother is dead. And that is exactly what happens. Beta enters a full-on psychosis and is able to track down the survivor's hiding outpost by using hints in his surroundings. He finds and surrounds the tower, an abandoned hospital used as a choke point for the survivors. This is the final stand, and they all know it. Panic ensues as they are quickly trapped in. The leaders of the coalition come to an agreement that the only way they are going to survive this is if they go through the horde and try to steer them away themselves. Daryl and Carol agree to go out there along with a small group, but Negan is commanded to join them as a way to atone. Beta circles the tower like a shark, looking for a way in or anyone on their way out. The survivors manage to get out there, but find this mission will be harder than expected. Beta commands the Horde to squeeze in, giving even less room for the survivors to get out. After losing one of their own in the Horde, the survivors make it to the other side and begin their plan to lead the walkers away. They blast music at full volume and head towards the sea. Side note, it's a huge missed opportunity to not have Beta's own song play here. It would trigger his rage even further and give a nice little story ending to that mini arc. But we can't have everything. The Whisperers begin to close in on the survivors, using walkers as meat shields and eventually destroy the sound system, leading the walkers right back to the tower. With no other options left, Daryl tells the group they have to go in and pick the Whisperers off one by one, and that's exactly what they do. Body after body hits the ground, and by the time Beta notices, half of his Whisperers are already dead. But when Negan enters his field of view, all that is forgotten. Beta immediately sees Red and charges Negan. The fight goes exactly as you'd expect. Beta throws Negan around like a feather and goes in for the kill, but not before Daryl steps in. Beta is defeated, but the Horde and the Whisper Stragglers are still after the survivors. It's a close call inside the tower as the Whisperers begin ascending up the stairwell. Gabriel fights back to protect the kids, but he is quickly overpowered. 
It appears to be the end for Father Gabriel, that is, until the Whisperer is suddenly taken out by Maggie, returning for the first time in the Whisperer arc. Carol decides she will be the one to lead the Horde away and expresses she is okay with this being a sacrifice, but Lydia does not allow this and pulls Carol back from the edge. And together, they watch as the walkers lead themselves off the cliff. And the nightmare finally comes to a close. The Whisperer War was a devastating event for our survivors. Many faces were lost along the way. Where I think the show differs from the comics is Rick. The story arc in the comics is meant to evolve Rick into a different type of leader, but with Rick gone, the Whispers had to have a new purpose. And I think the show does this well. When the group returns to Alexandria and Hilltop, they are absolutely devastated which sets up wonderfully for the story arc to come. In the comics, it was always kind of weird that the hilltop was rebuilt in just a few issues, and Alexandria didn't really face any damage at all. The show gives real consequences to the Whisperer arc, a real reason for the survivors to accept the Commonwealth into their home. And the craziest part is, the hilltop stays destroyed, a huge departure from the comics. We find out in Dead City that they just couldn't make it work, and it fell apart after Negan helped burn it down. The Whispers took the lives of many of our favorite characters, and marked the end of both the Kingdom and Hilltop, while leaving Alexandria in ruin. Maggie's return leads into Season 11, when Negan teaches her the tactics of the Whispers, leading to the victory against the Reapers, and the last Whispers we see are taking shelter in Hilltop. They are no longer a threat, however, as they have no Alpha to follow. This implies the Whisperers did not go extinct and may still have pockets left over across the US. And that is it folks, that is the end of the Whisperer arc in the Walking Dead comics. It took me embarrassingly long to finish this, like 5 months embarrassing, but I think I'm happy with the results, uh, I'm sure there's stuff I probably missed. But I believe overall this is the most streamlined version of the arc. So if you enjoyed it and you want to see me cover another arc, feel free to leave it in the comments. Thanks so much for watching.